What's up, Foot Clan? The Super Bowl is here along with a very special time of year. That's right. The UDK pre-order starts on Sunday at UltimateDraftKit.com. Today we're talking the truth of the tight end position, some NFL news, and a whole lot more, including our Super Bowl predictions. Don't miss a minute. Leave your comment below. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, February 9th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Whole bunch of producers are here. Got the whole gaggle. What are they, geese? The now? owl is back. I mean, it's a bird. <laughs> I it's guess. It's good to be back. What's a, what's a group of owls? I am on it. Thank you. A group of owls? They're not all owls. No, I know. Okay. I, I know. But, but you're just curious? It's, oh, this is a good one. A hoot? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it sure is a hoot. But they call it a parliament. A parliament of owls? <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's a parliament. And now we're back to the barristers again. <laughs> yeah, get the again. barristers on the owls. And, all right. Well, uh, we have a tight end truth episode, rounding out the truth episodes. Now, we don't have a we don't have the truth about kickers, right? Because that's going to be summed up very... That is... The tr- next week. Yeah, next week we're going to talk about the truth is that kickers <laughs> Two should, episodes? Not, yeah. should not be in fantasy football. Yep. So that's it? We're done? That's, yeah, well, I just did the episode right there. The truth is fan- fantasy football should not have kickers. The judge is here, the Borgogan. We got a, a full crew getting ready for the Super Bowl, which is Sunday. We're still working on how we're going to get down to the uh, to the stadium. I'm already on my way. But I think we're going to be all right. I think we figured some things out. Yep. I think the drone thing's going to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm planning on getting there around 3, 4 a.m. Uh, just to beat traffic. How long would it take to walk from here? I mean, I don't know if this is like security issue by giving this information away, but how long would it take to walk from here to the stadium? I'm on it. Oh, you're, lo- <laughs> you're looking it up. Well, we know it is exactly the what are the career yardage of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Is that correct? That's exactly what I just read so, in Slack. So oh, how yeah. long would it take Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, Fitzpatrick to, throw. to throw us there? Hmm. Jason, I'll Probably figure it out. Probably a long time. Yeah. Uh, Couple of things we want to looks like we can walk there in six hours and four minutes. Okay, not, that's a that's a not, long walk. Not bad. That's a long walk. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. We have a uh, quick question today, looking at Super Bowl score predictions. What do you got? Well, I've got the right answer. Oh gosh, uh, my Super Bowl score prediction is the game being won by the. Philadelphia Eagles, 27-24, to 24 and a close one over the Chiefs. All uh, right. I I can see some storylines here going both directions, obviously. You can't count Patrick Mahomes out of any game. I think outside of Mahomes and Kelsey, I think you stack every other position group and player up, team, you know, Chiefs to Eagles. I like the Eagles a lot more personnel-wise, but, you know, your quarterback kind of matters, so – um, I think I settled on Philadelphia winning this one, 31-24. What do I do here if in my playoff bracket I had the Chiefs winning? Oh, you got to stick with the But ball. you don't believe it <laughs> but anymore? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Look, you can't do the thing where our show all picks Philly and then the Chiefs win and we just look stupid. And okay. it was in your bracket and you didn't go with them. All right. I'll, my bracket had Chiefs-Eagles. Okay. So I've got, I've got the two teams in there. You get credit? For that. Thank you. And I had the Chiefs winning, so we'll stick with that. And let's go let's go uh thirty thirty twenty seven. Well Okay. How about 30, that? thirty to twenty seven. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Chiefs All right. lock lock of the century. I hope it's a good one. I, I think it will be. We have a lot of uh these are the best two teams, I think, in the NFL. So we'll we'll be excited to see what happens. Take it all in out here in Arizona. It should be fun. And I uh, hope you have a great Sunday watching the game with friends and family. And also something else yeah. on Sunday. Look, I mean, if if you're hanging out on Sunday, just if you're just thinking waiting, about football. You're waiting for the game to start. Maybe you've already 
maybe you've already set out some some snacks. Nobody's come over yet. And you're just sitting there on the couch because there's a moment, right, where you're waiting. Maybe you check out the ultimate draft kit. I like everything you said except for when you're, you're waiting for everyone to come over. I would personally recommend once everyone is there, everyone sits on the couch mm -hmm. and sees – you see who could order it the pre-order the fastest. Oh, you're like make the, a game you're out of group it together. Yeah, but you don't give up when Speaking one person <laughs> finishes. You need to yeah. Tell you, people about the like sit them down. I want to tell you about something. I brought oh. you here today <laughs> for this the presentation. The MLM experience. Um, and if you can, if you put together a slideshow or a whiteboard, some that'd free be great. Tupperware. Take some pictures, send it in. We'll yeah. proliferate yeah, yeah. your messaging. Yeah. Uh, but it is important that everyone you know get the ultimate draft kit. <laughs> Uh, hopefully they're not in the same league with you, uh, but, but you know if, if you want to be brave, courageous, yeah. play against the best, uh, you could do that. So Super Bowl Sunday, you sit them down and you you kind of explain the value of the UDK. You let them know, look, this is the lowest possible price. The pre order starts on Sunday. Five dollars to shopballers dot com, ten dollars to fantasychamps dot com. Free copy of our book, access to the UDK. You get the UDK plus. You can get into the Dynasty Pass immediately jam packed with content. Absolutely. These are some of the things you would say in your presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are great slideshow moments and uh ultimate draftkit.com. It's simple. Sunday is super bowl slash ultimate draftkit.com. Look, what's it going to take for me to get you into a UDK plus <laughs> a brand new UDK plus. <laughs> Just tell me. Okay. We'll, we'll go to the back room. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll spend 45 Just, minutes there. And also leave your keys here. We have not tried the timeshare <laughs> method of sales until this year. So, um, all right, let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league. We are slashing prices. We have more inventory than we've ever had. The boxes are piling up. We got to get them out of here. I, I will say this. We are already almost sold out of <laughs> ultimate draft kits so if you don't hurry up if you don't get in i mean they might be gone oh perfect yeah perfect i mean All there's right. been a lot of you know the, the, they're stuck in the harbor there's a data shortage right <laughs> a data shortage all right Derek carr visited with the saints on wednesday okay had, had to get permission to do so from uh his team they gave him permission and the Saints. That was real nice of them. The, the team that doesn't want him on the team anymore? I thought that the storyline around this was that he was going to be permitted these visits on the basis that the the team, being the Raiders, and the team he's visiting already agreed on compensation demands for Derek Carr. So I thought there was some discussion around, you know, teams needed to know what the Raiders wanted in exchange for Carr. Yeah. I, I feel like the team needs to know if they want Derek Carr. They don't. Before they're willing. But they already know. No, they already said they don't. They said they don't want him? What do you mean? He's not playing quarterback for the no, Raiders. No, I'm talking about the Saints. Oh, like, yeah. Like, they need to meet with Derek that, Carr and make sure it's a fit before you're like, yep, we'll give you a second-round pick. Like, I think, let him talk to the guy. I think it's more than a discussion, though. Like, if this is happening, the Saints have interest in Derek Carr. That was my kind of point was – there, some things, some bridges had to be crossed before you get to this point. So I think that they are in contention for Derek Carr. Yeah, gotcha. and Derek Carr has a no trade clause, so he has to actually approve wherever his destination is. That's why he's he's interviewing the Saints as much as the Saints are interviewing him. Uh, but but I mean, let's just let's just put him in a Saints uniform for a moment. You have one of the best up and coming young wide receiver talents in the game. Chris sure. Olave is a New Orleans Saint. We when you look at things that make you question some of these young receivers taking the next step, being a solid art, uh, wide receiver one for the year. We're looking at quarterbacks. We're looking at New York and saying, oh, Garrett Wilson needs a quarterback and Olave needs a quarterback. And um, this would mean stability at the position. Now, when Derek Carr shows up for the meeting, you know, and he's meeting with, you know, Dennis Allen, some other people, is Taysom Hill in that room? I don't. No. I would hope not. And they're I mean, like, he's kind of in every room but at I'm, all times. But I'm saying, like, if you're going to go be the quarterback – for the Saints, you have to know that your tight end is going to come in and take a bunch of your snaps. We're not talking about the truth of tight ends yet, Mike. We'll get there. No, I know. We're talking about the quarterback position for the Saints. Taysom Hill's and always I'm, available to help out in whatever you need, janitorial, uh, offensive look, line. I'm, I'm joking around here, just taking you know fun shots at Taysom Hill. But like really, if you're Derek Carr, 
And this is part of who the Saints are. They're giving Taysom Hill just a crap ton of money, and they have to figure out how to use him somehow. And all of his snaps were coming at the quarterback position. Does like does he if if Derek Carr is the level of quarterback that you have, do you keep subbing him off the field for Taysom Hill? Less than you did last year, certainly. I think uh I think that all starts with the premise that the team whoopsied their contract to Taysom Hill, and at this point it's all how do we get value out of it jamming him onto the field as opposed to Taysom Hill's a super talented player yeah, that I mean, was one of their best players on the team last year and and they just need to find a way to get him on the field. Obviously a different head coach now, but they were taking Drew Brees off the field to put Taysom Hill in sometimes. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Derek, your boy Sean Payton Derek, is doing that. Derek Carr will Sean certainly Payton loves Taysom Hill. sit on the sideline from time to time. He's probably going to trade for him. Well, uh, Derek Carr could end up on the Saints. We'll see what other teams are interested. Brian Flores agreed to become the defensive, oh, defensive coordinator of the Vikings. Such a good hire. Uh it's surprising to people, but Brian Flores has actually never been a defensive coordinator. Uh, he was uh, a myriad of, of positional coaches in the New England uh, coaching staff, on the New England coaching staff, and then was with Pittsburgh last year. But Minnesota's defense was 30th in yards per play, 30th in points allowed. The, this is a great opportunity for him to take this defensive unit to the next level. Yeah, and, and he was still in the running for the Arizona Cardinals head coaching job when he announced that he's taking this job. So that's there's been a lot of people this year that have said, no thank you, Arizona. We found out that our general manager that we announced, like, oh, this is who the guy we found. That was choice number two. Someone else said, no thank you. Oh, you didn't let it be Bling. Can Matt Ishbia purchase the Cardinals as well? I don't know, man. I don't uh, know. Well, it just makes you wonder. Is, is it an ownership problem? Is it the Kyler apprehension? Is it everything and every? I, I mean, wonder it's nice, why. It's nice to live out here. There's a reason the Super Bowl's out here every five years. Yeah, no snow. No snow, That's lots really, of golf courses. That's really it. There's a reason the old people, and I'm speaking of like Emmett Smith, J.J. Watt, they come out to finish on a two-year deal out here. A.J. Green, you come out here and you get paid for two years, and then you fade off into Sun City. So, uh, all right, Zeke, expected to take a major pay cut to stay with the Cowboys. And we, all, we did get a combo in news with that uh, during that report as well that Tony Pollard likely to be franchised. We've kind of talked about that. That seemed the most clear path forward for the Dallas Cowboys. Of you, can't, what Tony Pollard has become to this offense, you can't just lose him to free agency. You have to at least put your best foot forward to try and get him back on the team. And look, agree or disagree with what the franchise tag can do to these players and their careers. But it's a power that the Dallas Cowboys have right now, and I don't, I don't find it surprising at all that that's a move that they would make. We really talking about this Aaron Rodgers thing? Yeah. <laughs> why now we it, are. Why is this in the news? <laughs> because he's descending. We're letting people know that a decision is. I'm coming. I'm not reading this. Okay, a decision is coming from Aaron Rodgers. Where? Very soon, but he wants to just take a <laughs> darkness retreat. Come first on, man, it's fun. And think about it in total deprivation of senses. Multiple uh, days, he said. Four, four days. Four days. Four days in complete darkness. I'll tell you, you want to know who's not afraid of the dark? Aaron Rodgers is not afraid of the dark. Let me ask you this. Could you actually sustain four full days in pure darkness? Darkness. I do not believe I could make it twenty four hours. Four out <laughs> four hours. I do not believe I could make it four hours. Let's drop the twenty off. Yeah. I mean the yeah, psychological but, impact, you are going to you're gonna see some things he says he that are not Oh of course you are, because your brain, if you're in actual true darkness for that long, your brain's gonna start trying to fill in the gaps. How do they feed you? Where's my food? It's uh, you know like uh uh hamster water wheel or hamster Oh, uh, yeah, water one bottle. of those bottles? It's, it's got the little ball that you just lick it. Oh, nice. Like, does he just, It's like, full of, of uh, vitamins and things. Does he just scroll through, like, Twitter or, or no, you TikTok can. trends and then do the next one is for every a, one of his decisions? Is that trending? Well, I mean, you darkness got retreats? people jump into cold water. They do darkness retreats. He puts the stuff up the... Uh, the, the bing bong. <laughs> just, uh, I mean, just make a decision, man. He's about to. The first decision is I'm going into total darkness. Is this the kind of decision that 
I mean, did you go through this process when you decided to come work for us, Brooksy? The full darkness retreat was did you it go, necessary? Did you need the four days? Not quite four days. Okay. Not quite four yeah, days. Yeah. Nah, just a couple. <laughs> I mean, this is um. What? So where Aaron, do you even do that? There's places that just I know a guy. They, they sell. They I'm sure. Sell, what do you mean they, they sell, sell a darkness? dark room? I mean, like <laughs> I'm sure I could find a room for you. <laughs> if I asked you right now to be in the dark for four days, you couldn't figure that out. I I mean I I could figure out how to do it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah, dude. I I, I I I think it's wild. I mean, have have you ever thought of doing one of the 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 sensory deprivation tanks? Sure. I mean, I've seen I've seen people talk about this stuff because everything. I, I don't know if you knew this. Everything on TikTok will cure you from cancer or whatever the case may be. I see the people, they do seven day water fast to get clarity. I see people do the cold water baths to get clarity. We're searching here. That, yeah, I think we it all searching. comes down to that. We just want clarity. Do you think in the darkness, somewhere over the course of day one to day four, he will contemplate the $50 million that he could receive yes. by playing football? After he converses is there like a, a, with, with the, uh, what is it, the, the heffalumps and, lo and woozles <laughs> and the pink elephants from Dumbo, He's going to have a decision. He did say that the idea That's he didn't want to re retire with Brady and JJ Watt because he wouldn't get the the you know right. all the all the the, the yeah, all this stuff. all the stuff you were talking right about, the Jason. stuff that I was saying the sensible stuff he said no that that's not an issue he would love to retire with uh, Brady and JJ Watt he also like I don't know if you kept hearing the quote after that he said also Jason Moore eat it. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to be the and reason he, he retires. A, like he did a crotch chop. Right He'll be after like, "You that. don't think I'll retire? I'll retire right now. Yeah. And <laughs> just then, give me four days." And then I'll say, "You're welcome, everybody." I feel like we were a little hard on Aaron Rodgers during that last. I'm, I'm few trying minutes. to express that I think it's he's a really good like, quarterback. The, yeah, the fact that anyone could really do that it, that blows my mind. He's got nothing because there's to, no he's, way. He's there's got nothing else to do, man. Even if you have nothing else to do, if you could make it four days of pure darkness. If you were single, you wouldn't spend like a week in the dark just for fun. <laughs> That's when you get, I mean, immediately following the breakup. Yeah, you sp you spend some time in the dark. Really, you've done that. You're before. really depressed. <laughs> you're just the, in a closet. That's a closet, Jason. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that story. Mm -hmm. uh, Brock Purdy expected to have surgery uh, at the end of the month, and the plan is for a repair. So the initial team reports that he will be uh, ready to go for training camp. Our injury expert, Matthew Betts, you know, talking about this surgical procedure, you know, the recovery timeline in full is about six months, can start throwing around three to four months. I mean, I think the headline here is because he's going the repair route, not a Tommy John surgery route, he's a viable candidate to start week one for the 49ers, which was not a guarantee until we knew which route he was taking. Still has to go through recovery, but we could be staring down the Brock Purdy and um, and Trey Lance preseason we don't know who the starter is yet. Okay, so time, that to make our, time to make our predictions again. Oh, gosh. Now that we know he's going to be available <laughs> for camp. No, I, I I have not been in the camp that I think Purdy's the future there, so I I will go Trey Lance again. I will stick with Trey Lance. I'm going to go Purdy. I, Mike, I, Mike is the one that we need to know, hear from. I, he needs some time in the dark yeah, room. Yeah, I, I do. At least two days. Look, Trey Lance is going to be trying to high five Brock Purdy all the time. That's all I'm saying. You know, you know how they do the uh, every year because you know the internet needs more content. Yeah, they do the we redraft the first round. Yeah, oh over yeah, over again. Yeah. Did you yeah. did you catch that? <laughs> I did this, this, the silliest of exercises. So it's like if you could just start the draft over again, yeah. who would take who? And some teams take the same players. Yeah. And, um, but what was interesting is like Brock Purdy was like taken fourth or something overall in that draft. So, okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't it know. It makes a lot of sense. You watched him play quality football yeah. and take a team deep in the playoffs. So, the fact that Purdy's going to be healthy, Jason, you just said you think he'll be the starter. Yeah. To so change your Trey Lance dynasty viewpoint, just just that information. It, it the the fact that he is not going to miss this year with a full you know twelve month recovery from a Tommy John surgery certainly lowers, or at least at least it increases the risk. Uh, of a uh, Trey Lance share. So yes, I, I certainly am more trepidatious over Trey Lance in dynasty. It's certainly he has the higher value. Brock Purdy as the starter is ho-hum 
You could start him every now and then. He can obviously throw two touchdowns at 250 yards and be serviceable. But if I'm going to bet on someone for fantasy purposes, I'm still 100% on the Trey Lance side. I would take that bet over Purdy simply because if he is the starter, he can go out there and drop 30, 35 points because he can run for 75 uh, and rushing yards yeah. and a touchdown and then throw a touchdown with uh, 200 passing yards. So you, certainly upside is there for Trey Lance. I ask that because part of the UDK plus that, you know, you get access to right away on Super Bowl Sunday is our dynasty startup rankings. And I was staring down the quarterback position oh. where Trey Lance is at. Yeah. And kind of trying to decide between, you know, players like him and Russell Wilson right now, who's another kind of like divisive dynasty player because despite the fact we knew that we'd be here again, we're here again and mm -hmm. and people are I buying have, in. I still have Trey at ten. I'll Ten's hold, very high. I will I will hold up for dear life. Okay. And you just answered Trey Lance, right? I don't know what my oh, answer oh my, is. <laughs> I don't know what I just said. All right. Uh, don't talk to me. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back with a tight end truth. Any answers on Trey Lance, Mike? I said don't talk to me. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Well, thank goodness that graphic is done for this year. <laughs> uh, the tight end truth episode. Here we are. We've talked about every other position of relevance for fantasy football. And um, we talked about the fact scoring has been down. For other positions. For other positions. And that passing touchdowns, were, uh, receiving touchdowns, they were down overall. What's the truth about tight ends, though? Uh, the truth about tight ends uh, is that a league-wide, league all tight ends in 2022, is that they were more involved than ever. Teams are throwing to the tight end position. If you look year by year on the league average tight end target share since 2018, 2018 it was 19.8%. Then 20.6, then 21, 21.1. And last season, 21.3% of targets went to the tight end position, which meant that 16 different tight ends this season averaged five or more targets per game. That is the most in NFL history. And the truth in fantasy football for the tight end position is it sucks. Well, I guess I was going to, uh, to ask that about that must have meant that they're – was a lot of fun and choosing which ones to start and it's a matter of perspective man <laughs> you can you can be like man it sucks or you can say it's really difficult but when you when you get it right it's very satisfying one of the one of the kind of potential side effects of tight ends being involved more in these offenses is you saw some wide receiver twos that people were counting on in fantasy maybe not being as involved as we as we thought they'd be someone like adam thielen you know, you saw T.J. Hawkinson come in, have a huge impact. Deontay Johnson, the tough year, despite the targets, because, you know, Pat Fryermuth is involved in that offense. Um, you know, Michael Gallup with Dalton Schultz, Allen Robinson with Tyler Higby, Elijah Moore with, look, the Jets were kind of all over the place, but they did have, like, a lot of involvement from Conklin and later in the season, Uzama. So it, it is something to pay attention to if you're going to continue to see these mismatches exploited we didn't even have, uh, you know, a healthy Mark Andrews for the whole year. We didn't have a healthy Kyle Pitts for the whole year, and there were there were some other Thank tight ends goodness. that flamed out. <laughs> that was that was an absolute blessing. Yeah. Well, no, from a I target mean... share perspective, he was still going to meet the <laughs> expectation, not production. Yeah. So uh, we looked at the truth of the tight end position, breaking it down like this: great games, fifteen plus points. Good games, eight plus points. Bus games, fewer than five and a half. Yeah, we've we've adjusted it. Well, we actually low did, bar. So we did adjust it, and we adjusted it not just obviously from other positions, but we adjusted this from previous years. Uh, going through the truth data this season was rough, and you had to. I mean, I mean, usually a good game for a tight end over the last several years, the bar has been ten fantasy points. Looking at this season, trying to compare, you know, grading on a curve and looking at how they did amongst themselves, I had to move that bar down to eight points, 
which, you know, it doesn't feel good to get eight points, but I was looking through the game logs, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, you, you have uh, a game from TJ Hawkinson here where he's got eight targets. He's six for 77. Like, you, this season, six for 77 from tight end, you'd have to be like, that. that's a good game. I'm happy with that. Uh, you know, certainly that is a top 10 fantasy score of the week. So the bar was pretty low this year. And I think that really does show the fact that we had to move the target just shows how <laughs> freaking bad playing. How difficult. Tight end. How satisfying. <laughs> sure. Oh, we're, we're changing the language. I'm just trying to put a positive spin here. Spin. 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 Here's the challenge that we have. Right. We've been issued a challenge. Don't talk about Travis Kelsey for more than a minute. Okay. Because we know. The truth of well, Travis Kelsey. I think that the Travis Kelsey discussion is and will be entirely. Do we have another year of Travis Kelsey? Because he he dropped down like he was in like the second, right? Am I remember that right? He Kyle? was the second round, fourth pick of the second round, first tight end off the board still, but but in thirty three years old, and there was like there was a a genuine reason to be concerned of like can Travis Kelsey be. Not just like yeah, he's going to be a good tight end, but can he be that difference maker? Where if you look at him comparatively to like a wide receiver, you're getting a top ten wide receiver, but you're getting him at the tight end position. And it was, I, I even even I felt like I don't know, I don't know that Travis Kelsey will be that level of a difference maker. Big massive L there because he was he was uh, essentially the wide receiver five. If you it, but as the tight end, so it's just. Where are you going to take him? An underdog where people are drafting teams way too early, but it's kind of fun, uh, and they're doing their best ball tournaments. He's going essentially at the 104. So the people Whoa. who are investing early in, in fantasy football drafts are saying, screw this crap, Travis Kelsey's going to repeat again. I mean, it's a pretty easy, logical conclusion to make to keep drafting Travis Kelsey. The offense for the Chiefs is Patrick Mahomes throwing the football. They haven't had a running game in a while. They don't have any wide receivers that are the kind that demand targets. And so Travis Kelsey, he, he never busted this year. He was 76% good games, 53% above the great market tight end, and literally never busted playing every single week. Like You can't play a game where you put Travis Kelsey on a football field with Patrick Mahomes and not end up with this outcome unless an injury happens or some sort of better than Tyreek Hill type of influence comes onto this offense. At least in my opinion, I can't I can't be the one that just throws him away because I think he's getting too old. Yeah, he he is clearly an outlier human being. Uh you know, we we've seen that with Derrick Henry and with other absolute superstar physical freaks of nature of which he is. Uh we see that with his two-year older brother who's in in the Super Bowl as well, you know, this is this is someone you've got to continue to bet on, and I think you laid it out very well. You know the Chiefs are going to throw the ball. Who are they throwing it to if not Kelsey? Who? <laughs> Answer me that. Did, did you just try and spin? Oh, no, the, let him have it. No, I will not. I will not. You're, I thought I, it was professional. You tried to spin the mucus sandwich into a dramatic moment of, of tears? I did not try my guy succeeded. You succeeded oh he succeeded how dare you the people were with me they were in tears i was about to get my oscar uh i loved it and i was gonna let you have it Thank Here, you. here's a couple things that i want to bring I will up never travis kelsey 33 years old antonio gates during his 30 year 34 season 12 touchdowns 821 yards um near a career high in receptions sure 820 yards is not going to get it done like if you draft him my my it's not about him putting up numbers that kelsey puts up it's about him putting up numbers that are consistent with his career and he, okay, he wasn't fair. a 12 1300 yard guy he was just a touchdown and 800 yard guy you know he had a very good year in his year 34 season he had seven touchdowns and 600 yards in year 36 so uh, that's my way of saying i think kelsey's got at least one more leading the parade season in him, and then okay. probably two more, if he's around, contract and all that, being relevant for fantasy seasons. If he wants to play football, that's the other question. Do you remember when we thought Gronk was the most dominant tight end ever? I'm looking at this career log from Kelsey. It's He's the tight end one. Last year he was the tight end two. Yeah. Then one, 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 one. He's going to go pretty much a decade being the wide receiver one. 
So just draft him as that. And if you knew for sure, and we don't, obviously, but if we knew for sure that he was going to do next year what he did this year, then he is absolutely worth the 104. TJ Hawkinson was the tight end too. And that's all you need to hear to know how the rest of tight ends were. Now, uh, Kelsey was the number one in consistency, of course, first half, second half. Hawkinson was three in consistency, fifth in the first half, fourth in the second. But it was a good run for TJ Hawkinson. He was he was very necessary for this team. Uh, 914 yards, six touchdowns. That is a massive gap. What week was he traded? Was it 10? It was after week eight. Okay, after week okay. eight. So he went... 7, 10, 14, 6. I mean, yeah, you're right, Jason. That's all you need to say. Travis Kelsey was just so far and away better than even TJ Hawkinson at number two. 53% great games, 24% bust, 12% great. Travis Kelsey scored 206 fantasy points, half PPR. George, George Kittle was the next highest total uh, fantasy points at 140. TJ Hawkinson had 129 is what I'm saying. For just for total what? total fantasy points. I'm just saying what? the gap. Where are you seeing this? Uh, I'm on this. Oh, this is standard scoring. <laughs> it's still true data. <laughs> You're falling apart. It's still true data. So TJ Hawkinson had 172 fantasy points. And Kelsey was 261 okay. in, in half point. The, he, I mean, almost 100 more points. I'm, I'm saying the gap between him and everyone right. else is The interesting thing for me to look at for TJ Hawkinson is after he got traded – I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take out week 18 when he played 46% of the snaps. It was like uh, they didn't need him. Like it was just, you know, they had everything was kind of locked up, so they didn't play him for a full game. But weeks 9 through 17, that's nine games, his pace w would have been 160 targets, 111 receptions, 950 yards, and about six touchdowns. So if that's, if those are the types of numbers that he is going to, give you then i mean then tj hawkinson oh, man like where where does where does tj hawkinson get drafted uh behind andrews uh behind assuming yeah lamar's back probably behind kittle with the way he finished the season because kittle's potential we've seen it he, he broke the nfl receiving record at tight end for a minute um well actually it was kelsey that broke it for a minute and kittle took it right I th yes. was the other way the opposite. I think the opposite. Kittle okay. broke okay. it for a minute. Kelsey got it. But I, I he'll be right there with Kittle. I think it'll be uh, some leagues Hawkinson Fourth Kittle. Fourth round? Yeah, it, but that that seems about right. That's where the tight end four went last year, and that was Kittle last year. So Hawkinson this year, on into the future, the investment they made. He had a couple of those monster performances, eight for 179, 13 for 109. Couple touchdowns in each of them. Just saying, like, if the Minnesota, Much better against bad defenses. If the Vikings move forward with – with what could happen of Adam Thielen is a, un, he's a cap casualty for this season and he's no longer in the team and maybe they make a splash in the draft and they bring in another you know big name wide receiver maybe they don't maybe it's Jefferson and KJ Osborne TJ Hawkinson is going to be very interesting does does his success Jason give you any sort of satisfaction it it does a little bit because I was a TJ Hawkinson truther. Uh, I loved his college was film. Was he ever a my guy? He he wasn't, right? I don't think so, no. He was definitely on the board leading into he's it. He's been on the board that didn't make the cut, I think. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've always thought he's a good player. The issue is he has shown us over and over and over again that he's just not consistent enough uh, to really get it done. I, I do agree with Mike, though. If he goes in next season as the number two target for a good offense you've got to bump him up a little bit and he might be worth that fourth round pick yeah he he, he still lacks the long-term go-to factor where like kelsey's number one target and i think andrews is too right like those yeah. two guys are the primary targets on the team i think you can win a game without hawkinson because you have a justin justin jefferson or the running game but he's in that upper echelon now kittle comes in at three because his consistency rank was five he was drafted as the tight end four I think it was a really tough year to evaluate George Kittle because you had multiple changes at quarterback, you had injury, and you know in the games he played, fifty three percent good, thirty three percent great. We know what Kittle's capable of, but I don't know if people that drafted him in the fourth round really felt like they got, like they used that pick to their advantage. 
I would say no. I mean, because because the fact that of uh, you missed the first two weeks with what was it a, the groin injury? Yeah, uh, yeah. Was that what he was? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think was. it was a groin, and then you followed up. You're you're very excited. You get your George Kittle back. You're like that's it. Lock him into my tight end spot, and you got tight end twenty three, thirty seven, and twenty two. So now you are five weeks into the season, and you are likely panicking. Or you have already panicked and and tried to move on, so you didn't get the good run. Yeah, like overall, Kittle had a fantastic year. Mm-hmm. I mean, to miss the first two weeks, everything that happened to him, and still finished sixty receptions, seven hundred sixty-five and eleven touchdowns, and several several weeks as a difference maker for fantasy football. It was a great season, but because of how the start happened, if you're looking at just draft pick. I think you would. You probably felt extremely burned. He he goes into the same category we talked about on the truth of wide receivers of the San Francisco 49ers receivers. There's a there's not a huge passing volume there, and there are great targets. If you look at, he had a ton of really really bad games this year, and he had a uh, a lot of really really good games. But if you look at the four games that Debo Samuel missed, yeah, that's what I'm looking at right he's, now too. He's the tight end five. He's the tight end twelve. He's the tight end one. He's the tight end two. He was awesome, 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 awesome in those four games, and that's been the story of the last several years. In games where Brandon Ayuk is out, the games where Debo Samuel is out, they're like, "Oh, Kittle, you're up," and you, he's awesome. But the, the, in in games where all three guys are available, it's not that he can't do it; it's just that he doesn't need to do it. And, and they added Christian McCaffrey now, so yeah. you add another weapon to the passing game. Shanahan will pull a different weapon out to beat you every game. And because of that, he's still on a different level to me than Andrews and Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, when McCaffrey got there, you look at week 10, 11, 12, 13, th- three-fourths of those games were terrible with McCaffrey, and then and then that's when Debo goes down and Kittle's back. So I, Kittle I'll, versus, I'll be a little bit worried to draft Kittle next year. I was going to say, Kittle versus Hawkinson will be a discussion. Yeah, if, for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, you've got probably higher highs with George Kittle, but a higher baseline with Hawkinson. Andrews came in at four. Early we- my guy. Weird year. Oh, for next Mark year? Andrews oh, is? I am all in on Mark Andrews next year. He was drafted as the tight end, too. I don't even know two. who the quarterback is. I mean, this is obviously presuming Lamar Jackson. You, but no, you don't get to obviously presume <laughs> nothing. You, you yeah, this is a whole, you're opening up a whole new world of this <laughs> my guy crap. Okay. We ain't well, never done you, this. You go put him on I, the board. Look, the only reason I say this is because I, I was at dinner last night. Early credit. No, <laughs> that's fine. I'll go put him on the board. I was at dinner last night. We were talking uh, through some tight ends, uh, and and I talked about how much I'm in love with. What breaking news? You like Mark Andrews? The value Pretty good. that I think Mark Andrews will have next season. Well, because He's going to get drafted high. I, but I don't think he will get drafted as high as he got drafted this season. Right, higher. No. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, obviously, Kelsey will be the number one tight end drafted. For sure, without a question of a doubt. Now, Andrews will be the number two tight end, but I could see him being at the 2-3 turn because of how much he sucked at the end of last year. That's where he got drafted. And and, and he was worth it. Look, yeah, at the beginning, look at the beginning of the season. The he was first drafted six, at 3-0-1. The, so. the first six weeks of this season, he was better than Kelsey. He was unbelievable. He got injured, then Lamar got injured, and then you know there was the season was over for him, and he sucked the rest of the way. But it he, is it is hard though to not know. I mean, we're gonna get a we're gonna get some light out. That whole room is gonna get some yes, new names. Yes. So so maybe you're right. Maybe he will be a value because there will be anticipation about Bateman's health, a new couple of wide receivers, maybe a free agent and a rookie. There will be some some hype around that situation for sure, and maybe that will make him. A value if you believe the team will still function directly through Mark Andrews, which there's a new offensive coordinator coming in. There, there will be questions, so that may push him down a little bit, and then you know he he might be your my guy. That's that's what I'm saying is I think there will be enough questions to where people are not universally all in. People are going to be universally all in on Travis Kelsey. They're going to have questions and worries about Andrews because they're going to bring someone in. Remember, he was the tight end one when Hollywood Brown was there. Uh, So it's not like another wide receiver there is going to stop him from being able to be valuable. Okay, yeah, I think I think it's fair. He was consistency rank of seven. It hurt really bad not to have Lamar. I mean, weeks eleven through seventeen were they were all like Groundhog Day. It was like, oh, this will be the week that Mark Andrews does his thing. He didn't. Never saw that shadow. No, and I don't expect that that Kelsey's week eleven through seventeen would have been Kelsey esque if it was Lamar, Chad, if it was Chad Henney. Or, Lamar was there eleven and twelve. Yeah, and he was fine seven and eleven. So uh, 
Look, it all makes sense. I, the offense needs to get fixed. New offensive coordinator could deprioritize things. There will be more questions there around Mark Andrews. And, you know, I don't know if my confidence level is at the uh, call it in February level. Mm -hmm. but, I get it. Uh, I get it. But, but if, <laughs> if you look at the truth of tight ends, right, that's that's what we're trying to discuss here this year is like the truth of tight ends is one sentence. If you didn't draft Travis Kelsey, you had tight end problems. If you drafted t Travis Kelsey, you absolutely crushed the tight end position. And so next year, I think there's two guys, not just one, but I think there's two where you have to have them. Like everyone should draft those guys. I'm fully in on getting Kelsey or Andrews next year. Wow. That's going to be. That's going to be part of my strategy next Mike, year. Mike, if you if you had a, a win now team in dynasty, like next year's your year. Okay. Are you moving Mark Andrews for Travis Kelsey? In a so in a, in a dynasty squad, yep. I have Mark. Yeah, because it's another no. way of saying, do you agree with Jason that Andrews will be enough of a difference maker next year to make you not do that? Because the gap between Kelsey and Andrews this year, in the end. Could have won you a league or lost you a league. In the end, I was pushing back against Jason because I I think that overall Mark Andrews will be forgiven by the fantasy football community for the end of the year. Of you didn't have Lamar Jackson, you had you had no Lamar, you had no other like wasn't Sammy Watkins on this team at some point? Like they had nobody, and you had I mean you had Pro Bowl quarterback uh, uh, Snoop throwing the ball to Mark Andrews, so maybe that factors into people's decisions of where they draft Mark Andrews, but I think it's it's you wash it out. You remember that at the beginning of the year, he was truly dominating. The, the only thing I'll say and I'll so just... So no, I wouldn't. I, I would not trade Andrews for Kelsey. I'll put this out there because we're a show that puts things out there. Well He's said. had one unlike Kelsey who has been... You read the, the resume, right? One, two, one, 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 one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unlike Kelsey, he's had one outlier year with the 145 targets over 100 receptions. The rest of his career has been, you know, lower reception totals where Kelsey's at this massive uh, height. So there is like a world where that was just a year like Andrews needed everything. Like I think you could paint that picture if they brought in two wide receiver names. We're like, okay, we're never seeing 145 targets again. He's, or, yeah, no, he had 154. We have five seasons of Mark Andrews. He has surpassed 900 yards one time. Uh, you, Which, you, I, I, and I'm on team Mark Andrews, but like, like you do have years like that. I mean, yeah. there there are there are tight ends that go out and have one monster year. I mean, Kittle Kittle's kind of one of them, right? Like Kittle had one monster monster year that made him worthy worthy of maybe being the one. Yeah, and then it changed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you can you can also say. You know, since his rookie year, he's been a top five tight end every year, including sure. this year, yeah. where he completely sucked. He was the tight end four at the second half of the season. But you know, before that knee injury, you talk about the season he got off to on the back of last season's dominating performance, and before that injury, he was on pace for 161 targets again, 1,300 yards, uh, and 14 touchdowns. So he was trending to repeat last year's great performance. But it, but you're right, he didn't because of whatever situation, and he only has last year as the true alpha domination. Taysom Hill, Mike. I don't know why it took us so long to get to him. Number five at tight end. Taysom Hill, the tight yeah. end of the Saints. Yep. One of the best tight ends in football is tight end Taysom known, Hill. Known for his pass-catching ability. Yes. Yes, what, he caught 69% of his targets. That, that is I mean, that, pretty good. That for a catch rate, that's very nice. Yes. Um, now, the target totals, didn't, they were way up there, right? The 154? Did not surpass uh, – he didn't surpass 50 receptions. Or 40. Nor 40, nor 30, nor 20, nor 10. He he had nine receptions. Nine receptions tied in for five. Tight end <laughs> Taysom Hill. Uh, undrafted by everybody but Papa Josh. <laughs> Consistency rank of nine. I mean, this is uh, – I think Mike's issues all stem from – this is not a traditional tight end. He gets categorized as a tight traditional. end. Traditional. He doesn't play the tight end position. He does. Ish. Poquito. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't play it in a way where his fantasy production comes from those snaps. It comes from right. taking snaps in the running game, throwing the football down the field. How many total pass attempts did he have this year? 19. Isn't that the same amount of total targets he had? Or was 13. That oh, 13 okay. targets. All right. He had now, isn't it impressive that he finished at tight end 10 if he passed the ball 19 times and caught the ball nine times 
Tight end five. What Even did I say? Tight end ten. Yeah. Yeah. So I get. So put him at running back. Okay. So regardless, we yeah should we, he be a running back? Yes, he should be a running back. He has ninety six rushing attempts and thirteen targets. Wouldn't you just be complaining about the fact he gets the to throw the ball four times a game too? No, I would say go ahead draft him. Yeah, I guess you, you'd wash it out. He has he provided an advantage at this position. If you can yeah. finish at five by not being a tight end, maybe you're right. He had games where he helped win you a week, and then he had games where he cost you the entire week. If he's a tight end next year, he's still going to be involved in these offenses, and you're still going to have the wild card that is Taysom Hill. I agree. That's and, the truth. And I, I don't think I'm going to be very um, – Turned turned away by Derek Carr. If Derek Carr comes, I don't believe that he's going to take Taysom Hill off the field. You know, week one they started with Jameis, and Taysom Hill was the tight end three on the week. Uh, it's, it's, does he involved. score? Yeah. Does he make the one big throw? Evan Ingram comes in at six. Uh, he's interesting. He had a con consistency rank of eleven. First half it was eleven. In the second half he was tied for sixth in consistency. 47% good, 47% bust. Uh, Evan Ingram had a nice little run between weeks 13 through 16. That's really the story of the year for Evan Ingram. Uh, he was the tight end two from week 13 on. So the the playoff, uh, you know, the imprint of Evan Ingram on sure. your playoff run was significant. That was the first time in his career during that run that he hit double-digit fantasy points in four consecutive games. He certainly wasn't necessary for this team to have success throughout the course of the year, but he, he did impress in those games. And and to be fair, you know, I say it's interesting because he's got a great athletic profile. He's got an up and coming offense, an up and coming uh quarterback and Assume he, he's re signed. Right. He is he's a free agent, but I, I believe he'll be re signed. I think he wants to be back. I think they want to have him back. They have the money to do it and he earned a role. So assuming that he is back with Jacksonville, then he he's interesting in that way, but there are a lot of mouths to feed there, and when you're looking at reliability, he won't have reliability. They're really we're past the tight ends with reliability. This is just tight ends with talent who can operate. Hit a spike week, yeah. Hit a, hit a hit a spike week because you're gonna have Calvin Ridley. Yeah, mo there's most that can't. So with Calvin Ridley added to th this receiving core, Evan Ingram will be up and down and. You, you, at least we saw his ups. It reminds me a little bit of what Jared Cook was like for fantasy uh, for, for a few years because the athleticism sure. for Jared Cook was like there. Like pre-Raiders? Yeah, or, or I mean, even even when he was with uh, Green Bay, like, you know, you had a spike week here and there from Jared Cook, and, and I think Evan Ingram's physical profile allows that to happen. We saw it. He had a monster week 14. Without it, he's nowhere near this finish. Uh, he's kind of had that. He had the mix-in week of of sorts for the mm -hmm. tight end position. That was the crazy. Was that the bad 35 weather? Five fantasy points in yeah. week fourteen. Oh uh, no, that, the the bad weather was his second big. Okay, but um, but yeah, I mean Evan Ingram gets his due because this is a short list of players that that do. It, because this is a list of players that don't. Cole Komet at seven, Pat Fryermuth at eight. Komet was nineteenth in consistency. It was a tiny tiny spurt of success for Komet in well, weeks eight through ten that were touchdown dependent he had seven touchdowns this year just 50 catches second half he was tied for sixth inconsistency in, inconsistency yes. and was what was the week when you cut out of curiosity because we give first and second half are you cutting the season at the eight week mark or the nine week mark the truth is it is cut after the nine week mark so really? the first half is nine weeks and the second half is from week 10 on interesting yeah. i think i'd cut it the other way well we just didn't. throwing it out there yeah just because week 17 doesn't I so will, matter to people what what i will say you need to we're gonna have to redo all these shows yeah with a new okay. cut <laughs> for sure is is take a look at so it was week six is when we got our first glimpse of of justin field's you know starting to make some waves for for fantasy that was his first top 12 finish he was the quarterback eight against the Washington Manders. So to me, I and just watching the Chicago Bears offense, the first five weeks or so, I just throw them out of the sample of of like this is what the team could be and and could become. So it, that wasn't the breakout day for Cole Komet. It took a couple weeks after that, 
But saying once the offense switched, that's when Cole Komet started to get more and more involved. I'm certainly not saying I'm I'm banging the drum here for for Cole Komet. Like let's he's going to be the the sleeper tight end of 2023. But I think it's it's fair to look at at the Bears' offense from that point because it was so so different. I I just am not that into the future of Cole Komet. Mm-hmm. I don't think that I I can't paint the picture in my head of the scenario where he becomes something that you're looking forward to in fantasy. He was busting at 60% this year. He's a super talented guy. They had no wide receivers, yeah, and he that still with, didn't do it. That was with Mooney gone. They're going to add someone in the offseason. And they don't throw the ball as much. Exactly. It's going to be um, uh, still a small passing pie and more people. to it, the, the, the interesting name to me is Pat Fryermuth. Yeah, I'm much more interested in Fryermuth. Fryermuth was actually pretty darn good. He was the first half of the season, which obviously is the first nine weeks. Uh, he was tied for sixth in consistency. And then remember at the very end of the year, he got injured. That was really frustrating, Mike. You lived that experience with Friar Muth, yeah. where he, he got injured. He the played truth about the Muth. He did not miss games, but he was you know down at fifty six percent of snaps, fifty five percent of snaps. You that's not how he was on the season. You know he started the season eighty nine, eighty one, seventy six, seventy three percent of the snaps, and then he was hobbled and playing through stuff and had some bad games in the at the end of the season. So he was better this season than his you know per game season in total was and now he has a rookie quarterback who is going to be better next year I don't think that he's going to be a superstar but he's certainly not going to be a a rookie in his second well, year he won't be a rookie technically you will yeah I am 100 percent correct he will be his sophomore season I'm not sure it's going to get better I, I'm I'm pretty confident that with a well-run organization um you know, Tomlin, this was a team that won a lot of games down the stretch with a full off season coming into his sophomore year. I don't I it's, don't it's, it's not his sophomore year, just to be clear. It's not? No. That's your Who second, are you talking about? Can he pick it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> can he pick it? I was I was you scared I was like, What? Did I delete a year of drafted in 1987? I can't, I can't talk about players this deep in the He's tight end. Forty life. years I old. I was still. I was. My brain was got 17 <laughs> Pro Bowls. Bill Brasky. Yeah. I was still processing Justin Fields. I, I, in my head, you were saying Justin gotcha. Fields was gotcha. in his sophomore year, and I thought you were saying that because his first year was kind of no, Matt no, no, Nagy no. thrown out, and then I, I apologize. Yeah, that's all right. Apology accepted. But my point is. I don't think he's going to be great. I do think. Tell you about Terry McLaurin. (laughs) I do. I do. (laughs) That's Antonio Gibson. That's right. I do think uh, that Kenny Pickett is going to be a better quarterback next year, and that the offense is going to be better next year than it was this year, and that's going to help Fryermuth a little bit. Let me let me uh, let me put a bow on this episode before things go sideways. Uh, Further, Dalton Schultz, Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz, Darren Waller, Greg Dulcich. Those are the next names on the list. Dalton Schultz was drafted as the tight end six, did not deliver on that draft capital at all. His consistency was 16, finished at 10 at the position, dealt with an, a couple of injuries, had some spikes over the back half of the year that put him at eighth in consistency. But again, you draft him in the sixth round, you need to know you can lock that guy in every week. I don't think, you know, you can make, obviously he didn't have Dak for the beginning of the year and that's going to disrupt things. But it was disappointing for fantasy players sure. regardless of how that uh, that shook out. I, I I think should Dalton – well, Jason's yeah, I mean, pretty happy about that. Yeah. Just because you won a title with him yeah. on your roster. He was the number not, one tight end in championship week. Does not week. mean that he had a good season. Over this over the second half, it was it was much better. The, but Dalton Schultz, the whole conversation is where is he? He was playing on the franchise tag. If they're going to franchise Tony Pollard, maybe they get Zeke's money down to a, a, a place where they can actually bring Dalton Schultz back in. But – that's going to be a, a big thing to to move. So let, let's ask a dynasty question, Jason. Let's say you have you have Dalton Schultz on your roster. Are you keeping or are you trying to trade, believing that like because this could be an Austin Hooper situation? Mm-hmm. Like Dalton Schultz will be offered money. Like he will be offered a, a a good starting job and a good amount of money. And Austin Hooper, I mean like. You could see he was his production for fantasy was completely a product of of him being with Matt Ryan in that offensive system. And it's, when we when he moved, it was like, oh man, I do not care 
for Austin Hooper. I think it was the Cleveland Browns. It's like if Dalton Schultz goes to to a situation like that, his value could completely smoke bomb and vanish. Uh, I completely agree with you. What I'm doing with Dalton Schultz, if I have him, is I'm holding on to him until he signs because if he signs a big money contract with a team that needs a pass catching tight end, I think his value goes up to most people. They say, oh, he's got. Okay. Four years and a bunch of money, and I am trading the heck out of him wherever he signs, no matter where he goes. He goes to Green Bay, and Aaron Rodgers is back, and people are saying the opportunity is great. I will trade him. Um, if should, he, now, if he, he re-signs it with Dallas, I'm going to hold on to him because I do okay. think that he is a, a valuable enough tight end um, um, amongst the mucky muck. Yeah, I mean, 57 for 577 and 5 last year for Schultz. Goddard? Oh, now, he's man. a dude. Goddard put up better numbers in half the games. I mean, this was the number two most consistent tight end when he played. The problem was missing weeks 11 through 15. But 58% good games when he played, only one bust. I'll take Dallas Goddard over George Kittle next year. I That's think he fine. is a better all-around uh, you know, player in a higher scoring offense. Uh, it was a very impressive uh, run. You didn't really have too many games where he was the dominant force. He just was consistent. And so, you know, you could definitely score more touchdowns than three in the games that he played. How many total? 12 games. So, you know, you could see that go up for sure. And I think Goddard is – I'd probably have him behind Kittle, but those two are neck and neck. So right now, uh, just referencing underdog because that's the only real drafts going on right now, Goddard currently the tight end six – so he would be behind George Kittle, yeah, and in two ADP spots behind the forever, oh, the forever Kyle Pitts, forever this, hopeful. Kyle oh Pitts. my goodness! <laughs> oh man, we're not talking about him today, are we? Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't checking. finish inside the top ten. Mm. Uh, Just Kyle, missed it. Kyle Pitts, uh, but may, may, it, it could work for us this Kyle time. Kyle Pitts uh, was on a sweet, sweet hundred target pace, gentlemen. 100 target pace. Yeah. That is awesome. How many yards would that turn into? Hundreds. <laughs> Hundreds. 600. 600, okay. which would have been more than Dalton Schultz. Well, if you pace out Dalton Schultz missed games as well, probably not. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> we don't do stuff like that. We don't do complicated math with pits. We do simple math with pits. Um, yeah, I, I love that. If I can get Dalton Schultz as my... At, at tight end six next year, Goddard, he's Dallas, Goddard. Or Dallas Goddard. Uh, he's my my guy next year. <laughs> <laughs> Three tight end my guys. Yeah, it's never been done. The important thing <laughs> is that if you claim them now, they're yours no matter what right, happens. Right. Yeah. So, so thank uh, you. That which always works out. Uh, we're gonna stop talking now. Let's, I think we're done. A get out of here. final couple of things. One, enjoy the Super Bowl. Yes. Have a blast. Uh, looking forward to the end of the season. Should be a great matchup. Number two, ultimatedraftkid.com. On Sunday, the pre-order goes live for the UDK and the UDK+. Plus. If you like Dynasty, DFS, preparing for your draft, this is the time to jump in because we – I think I, I – I didn't even mention it at the top because I'm a lunatic. And then we were talking about other stuff. We got into the MLM pitch. Yeah. We're giving away a listener league spot. Yes. Yeah. So if yes. you get the UDK between now and March 1st, or between Sunday and March 1st, you'll be entered to win a Listener League spot to come play with us along with all the other perks. So please head over there Sunday morning when you're sta walking around the house because you've done everything that you need to do mm -hmm. and or, you know, obviously put on a presentation for your extended family, and ultimatedraftkit.com. When you're doing that presentation, if you get photographs of all the people you have you know, change pushed lives. and change lives in in getting the ultimate draft kit. You get their spot in that listener league. So if you convince oh, them to do it, yeah, when we go, you're in, you're in, baby. <laughs> it's like Willy Wonka. You want multiple shots to get this golden ticket, people. Good. All right, there you go. Enjoy the game. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.